of this rebroadcast of an interview with Chris Shea, founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Thank you for hitting that play button. You know I appreciate it. So let me ask you this. Do you find yourself struggling to find inner peace? Does the constant chaos of life keep you from reaching your full potential? You know, we often get caught up in the everyday minutia of life and lose our inner focus. We find ourselves failing to live in the moment, right? That happens to you, right? Well, if there was a way to find peace and calm within yourself to lead you to a path of inner happiness, would you follow it? Would you like to be able to appreciate those moments in life that often get forgotten? I know that answer is yes. That's what you're looking for. This is your podcast for health and inspiration. Which way is life? I'm your host, Bill Klaproth, and this is episode 77, and we're going to help you find that inner peace today. And if you can, please take 30 seconds and rate and review the podcast on iTunes. I would greatly appreciate it. And my guest today is Chris Shea, founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching, Counseling, and Consulting Group. Chris has spent 20 years in the counseling field teaching people meditation, and techniques for living in the moment. Chris helps people connect with their inner selves to find the peace they seek from within. In addition to coaching, Chris publishes blogs and podcasts on his lifesjourney.com website and is out with a new book, The Journey to Inner Peace Starts Here. Chris, thank you for joining me today. I like to start the show with the one thing. Are you ready? I am ready, and it is great (laughs) to be on your show. Well, thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Can you quickly share with us one thing someone can do to improve their life today? One thing to improve your life today, right at this moment, I would say the best thing to do is to pause for a second and just take a look at the world around you. And just be in that moment. Just be in that moment. So and, often we uh, tend not to do that. And it's good to get into that practice then, too. And I'm sure you're going to tell us more about that as we get into the interview. Correct. Yeah. I mean, it's all about seeing that world around you and especially the little things, you know, that we typically miss through the busyness of our day. Oh, so important. Love it. Love it. All right, Chris. Well, before we dig into your story, let us in on your personal life. What brings you joy when you're not saving the world? Oh, I wish I were saving the world. (laughs) (laughs) How wonderful that would be. I think Um, you are. (laughs) Well, we we try. (laughs) But uh, the the greatest joy for me, I would say, is family, Uh, you know, with uh, my wife and the kids and uh, there's a grandkid on the way, and so for me, that's uh, right now what's bringing the best joy to my life. Well, congratulations on that, and that sounds really cool. Love it. And I quickly want to mention Which Way is Life is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Which Way is Life. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 Player, Chris, let's dig into this. Tell us, what is the biggest obstacle people face in finding inner peace? In one word, I would say ourselves. Um, We tend to block ourselves from finding inner peace. And it's so frustrating. I mean, I've been there. I've done that. I, I see my clients doing that. Um. But it's really in how we view ourselves, how we view the world around us, how we're able to acknowledge our own giftedness. And most of us don't take the time to do that. We just kind of go through life. And when things happen in life, we tend to sit back and say, why me? Why is this happening to me? Uh, Without really recognizing that we are in control of our lives. So why are we our own biggest obstacles? What are we doing? Or, or not for, doing? Yeah, really, either way. <laughs> but uh, I think for most of us, and I'm even speaking for myself, that it, it's just not taking that time to recognize that we can control 
what's going on around us. And what I mean by that is we have full control over our emotions and over our thoughts. And it's very important for us to really begin to understand that the actions that I take based on the feelings and thoughts that I'm choosing to have is going to impact the world around me. So I can't really stop things happening to me or around me. But if I change my focus of that and start to see that I'm actually a player in this, I'm not a victim in, in what's going on around me, I begin to change that world that's around me. And then I begin to realize that things aren't just happening to me. But that takes time to sit back and reflect on ourselves and, and to find a lot of uh, self-confidence. Right. So we have full control over our actions and thoughts. You just said that. I love that phrase. So, And you said it's difficult. How do we get control over our actions and thoughts? thoughts. You know, we're not taught this stuff growing up. Our minds are always going, thinking, racing to this, racing to that, worrying about this, thinking ahead to this. How do we get that control over our thoughts? The first thing that I would say is we just need to believe that we have control. Because so many of us, and and again, I include myself in this, you know, how often have we said or heard people say that You know, things such as he or she made me feel or, you know, they made me do this. Phrases like that. We need to step back and stop using those phrases. Those phrases, we're turning our control over to somebody else. So if I'm going to say that somebody else is making me feel a certain way, that feeling is also going to have me acting in, in a certain way. I can't give them that control to begin to understand that whatever anybody does to me or says to me, I still have full control of how I'm going to respond to that and how I'm going to feel about that. There really isn't a set pattern that says, if you say X, I'm going to do Y. If you say X, I have choices from A through Z on what I can do about that. It's the choices that I'm going to make, and that gives me the power and control over what's happening around me. So if you find yourself saying, you know, this person made me feel, or this happened to me, why does this happen to me? So if you're the type of person that are saying those things to yourself, recognize that and go, hmm, I'm falling into this trap. Wait a minute, stop. I have full control over my thoughts right now, and I can choose to feel differently. Exactly. And and that's all in my choice. So when, you know, clients say to me, you know, things like, well, you know, I can't help what my family does, or I can't help what my spouse is doing, or I can't, all of those statements are totally true. So we, we, we have no control over what another person is going to do. But the next step isn't the woe is me, look at what these people are doing around me. I want to say then to the person, all right, so what is your response? What are you doing in response to that that's going to counter that, which ultimately is going to give you your own peace? And part of finding that inner peace is we have to be complete within ourselves in the sense that the way that I view the world needs to mirror what my values about the world and about myself are. So if I'm acting within those values, acting within the way that I believe, I'm going to be more at peace. It's when I start acting against those things that I believe that I start to lose that peace. And then I start to blame other people. And that's very unhealthy at that point. So, Chris, let me ask you this. How does a lack of inner peace then, you were just talking about it, how does that impact different areas of our life? I think it impacts everything. Uh The way that I've learned through working with others and even through my own self-reflection that the way that I feel about myself is going to influence the way that I feel about and view the world around me. So, you know, when, when I look at myself, if I'm not happy with who I am, if I'm not feeling peaceful, if I'm feeling anxious and, you know, life just isn't right, 
there's no way that I can look at the world around me and, and find beauty in it and find peace in it and find happiness in it if I inside don't feel it or see it. So until I start to change that part within me, then I can start to look at the world around me and say, hey, you know, it's a cloudy day, but aren't those clouds really, you know, nice? Aren't, you know, it's raining out, but hey, we needed the rain. You know, it changes that perspective because I can see within myself, you know, I, I kind of like who I am and I'm kind of comfortable where I am. So to me, well, the rainy day, okay, we needed it. It's washing things. You know, life is good. Mm-hmm. So how do we get ourselves right inside then? Again, I keep emphasizing we really need time to sit and people can say meditate or, you know, whatever you want to look at it. But for me, it's just how do I, within the course of my day, just stop everything and focus on what I'm feeling, what's going on around me, and really just letting it all soak in. And that's the meditation piece, the mindfulness piece. Just know what's happening. You know, kind of what we had said at the beginning of the show, you know, it's if we stop for a moment and look at the world around us, do we notice the small things? You know, do you notice uh, a bug that flies past you or something walking down the sidewalk, you know, or, you know, this, this little flower that maybe you didn't notice in the busyness of, of the day? Once we start to focus on the small, we can start to focus on ourselves and then start to look within ourselves and say, you know, what's good about me? What do I like about me? What really don't I like? You know, what what are those things that maybe I need to shift around a little bit? Uh, You know, what is it that I need to work on? But if we don't stop and do this, we're just going to keep in that hustle and bustle. And as we miss the little things, we're going to miss the little things in us. And, you know, as as anybody knows who's in any type of relationship, it's those little things that over time is what's going to become the problem. Right. If you don't address those little things, they become big things. So I think that's really good what you said there is first you got to slow down and kind of live in the moment and recognize what's going on around you and then turn that focus inward. And while you're learning to be still, and reflect on yourself and and really become more self-aware. What is it that I like about myself? What is it that I don't like about myself? Or what is it that's bothering me? Or what is it in my life that that I just don't like right now? So that's what you're saying, Chris. That's what we all need to do, right, is, is try to answer those questions first. Then we can move into more of a, a state where we do find more inner peace. Exactly. And I think what messes up a lot of people as as we're going through this is is that it is a process and it's not going to happen overnight. And we live in in such a a culture, you know, where everything is immediate and people want to know what is the secret to finding inner peace? How am I going to get inner peace today, right now? And I'm, I'm very blunt to my answers. I've had people say that I want inner peace now. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, well, you're not going to get it. <laughs> Serenity now. Serenity now. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent episode. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's not going to happen, and, and it is going to take some work. But for me, the work is worth it because as you do get into that, you know, habit of checking in with yourself every day, it really doesn't take much thought, and it's going to start to produce that that peaceful, more of a happy sense that we're seeking. But it's going to take time, you know, and, and the patience. And we're not, as a culture, geared for patience anymore. And, and I think that's part of the reason why there's so many unhappy uh, people right now is everything is hurried and busy, and certain things have to take time. We all want everything right now. Give it to me now. Instant gratification society. So let's dig into this a little more. I really try to break things down for the listener. Mm -hmm. So are there things that people can do to perform daily to gain more inner peace? Do you have other actions or is it simply just reminding yourself or putting a sticky note 
up to say, hey, check in right now or check in every half hour, check in every hour. Are there other steps we can take to make sure that we're starting on this journey to finding inner peace? Anything that can remind you to do the check-in, as you mentioned, go for it. Um, there's a lot of good apps out there that you know can remind you, like on the hour or however you set it, or just set an alarm, you know, that that goes off every couple hours to remind yourself. But I think the other thing that we really need to start focusing on is thinking before we speak, but also thinking before we think. As we mentioned earlier, you know, the way that I'm thinking is going to affect the way that I feel. So if we can also, before we start saying things to either ourselves or to other people, that we need to think it through as to what is the positive nature of what I'm thinking we're about to say, and is it an expectation which is something that's achievable or am I placing an expectation on myself or somebody else that's not, uh, you know, truly achievable because more so in, in that latter part, we tend to put so many expectations on others or on ourselves that we're never going to reach them. And when that happens, that just confirms to ourselves that either people aren't reliable or, you know, I'm not as good as I thought it was. And then I can just keep going into that self-talk, uh, you know, for all the negatives. So really making sure that our expectations about ourselves and others are reasonable. Thinking before we think. It's very interesting. So instead of falling back into old habits, and you mentioned the negative self-talk, you know, I suck, or why do I do that, or I'm not good in this situation, think, no, okay, wait a minute, let's not fall into my old thinking patterns. Let's think differently about this, and where can I find the positives, and, and why am I worthy of being strong in this moment, etc. So you're saying to get out of that, those negative thought patterns, think before you think. That's what you're saying? Yeah. And, you know, without getting philosophical, that's the best way that I would put it of, you know, thinking before we're thinking. Um, Because, you know, a lot of times if we really step back and think through those thoughts that we're having, they can be silly if we think about it. You know, it's not at the moment, but if you really step back, like when people will say, you know, "Well, well, the world is out to get me. You know, let's think about that. Seriously. Of all the things going on in the world, there's some force pointed at you <laughs> that wants you to fail. That, that right. just doesn't make sense. But how many of us believe that? I mean, I used Probably. to believe that. Sure. You know, so, you know, with, with many of us believing it, that this is what I'm saying with, with that, you know, think before we think, that if we really think something like that through, it's like, well, that doesn't really make sense. You know, so yeah, maybe bad things are happening to me. I mean, we're not going to deny a reality. But is it some force that's after me, or is it maybe actions that I'm taking which is leading to this? Is it actions I'm not taking, you know, which is continuing to have things happen to me? And maybe start to think that through, you know, what role am I playing in this, either actively or passively, and then what do I need to change? Right, and what are my expectations of this moment right now that I'm expecting I should win and everything should work out perfectly, you know, when it doesn't, mm-hmm. then it's like the world is out to get me. So maybe I need to readjust my expectations of this moment. Exactly. You know, the, mm-hmm. that person who plays, you know, the lottery all the time says, you know, I never win, you know, the lottery's out to get me or it's it's against me. Um, probably not, you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> there's winners and there's losers in a lottery and you're just not the winner right now. Right? But that, but that's not a personal, you know, a, attack. But I think, you know, when we go through life, even in relationships, and I see this a lot in my practice that, you know, one spouse is upset at the other because of the expectations that they've placed on that and on what the relationship is. So I think another thing we can do for our happiness is to talk more to share more of what we expect out of ourselves, out of life, out of relationships. Because if everybody knows what I expect, 
then, you know, we can get that feedback as to either, hey, yeah, I'll give that a shot, or you know what, I really can't do that. And then let's talk about why I can't do that and maybe what compromises we can make. But, you know, how often I have one spouse, you know, who's complaining, you know, well, why didn't the other spouse, you know, do this nice romantic thing or whatever? It's like, well, did you tell them that's what you're looking for? You know, well, no. All right, so how did they know? (laughs) So... You know, without them knowing something, then they don't do something, and then we're upset they didn't do it. You know, that's an important piece uh, to the inner peace, if you will, of finding inner peace is, is those expectations, especially when you're in a relationship with somebody, whether it being your spouse or your parent or a coworker, and if something isn't happening that you think it should happen, happen, or you're being you're you're frustrated at the moment is talking that out and speaking with that other person instead of just keeping it inside, which is going to really screw your inner peace up again, right? Oh, yeah. How many tapes do we play, you know, in our own heads about, you know, what people have said and what we think it means, and and we start playing those tapes, and we become those line readers, you know. It's like, well, I know that's really what they meant. And then that bothers us, and we lose our inner peace. Well, you really don't know if that's what they meant unless they actually come out and say it. So maybe we need to talk more and say, hey, you know, I kind of think you meant this. Is that right? Or can you explain to me what you meant by that? And then that's going to help me to know, because even if it is that negative, I can still gain inner peace through hearing something negative because I'm no longer guessing. At least I know what the reality is, and I know what it is that I'm going to need to do next. You know, again, I'm in control of my feelings, so I can hear this negativity, and then I can do something with it. But if I'm just guessing, yeah, I'm, I'm going to lose inner peace really quick. Right. Gaining that clarity is so important. So then you know, instead of conjuring up all these other thoughts in your mind, which may not be true. Well, exactly. You know, and uh, again, who hasn't done that? You know, you, you walk past a coworker who, you know, doesn't say hi to you and you keep walking things. So what did I do to them? You know, why don't they like me anymore? Why didn't they say hi? Maybe they didn't see you. Maybe they were busy. Maybe they're grumpy. Maybe they're not feeling well. You know, there, there's so many reasons why, but we personalize interactions like that. And it's like, what did I do? Why don't they like me? Right. Right there. I've lost my inner peace. Mm hmm. So that's just great advice and good things to remember as you go through everyday life. And Chris is out with a brand new book, The Journey to Inner Peace Starts Here. And what we're talking about today, you're going to get in this book, right? Exactly. Um, So much of this is the book. So get the book or listen to this. (laughs) <laughs> no, still get the book. Still, well, still there's a, you know, we're just touching, yeah, right, exactly. We're just touching the surface here. So if you really want to go more in depth and, you know, more steps on how to find that inner peace and that mindfulness, pick up that book. The Journey to Inner Peace starts here with my guest today, Chris Shea. And coming up, we're going to get the high five from Chris. But if I could quick ask a favor, I would appreciate it if you rate and review the podcast on iTunes. That way I gain a wider audience and it gives us a chance to help more people. And that's what this podcast is all about. So if you could do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. The high five with my guest today, Chris Shea, is coming up next. Which Way is Life is brought to you by Audible.com. And just for listening to Which Way is Life, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check it out. So if you like listening to podcasts like this one, you're going to love Audible.com. So I would recommend you check it out and browse all the books you can download for free with a 30-day trial. Just go to audibletrial.com slash and then type in Which Way is Life. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash Which Way is Life for your free audio book. Time for the high five with my guest today, Chris Shea. Chris, are you ready? I am ready. All right, question number one. What lit your spark for inner peace and meditation and becoming one of our best self-help gurus? What lit my spark was the fact that I wasn't feeling at peace and I was feeling somewhat lost in my own journey and I needed to make a change and it was either stay that way or do something different. So I went with doing something different. 
And when you found your own inner peace, you probably thought, I want to share this with everybody. <laughs> exactly. It's like, hey, it is possible. <laughs> you know, it, it's not just something in a book, but I mean, like I've experienced it. It's possible. We can do this. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's you know, like this thing, you get something that you're, you know, really happy about. It's like the best news ever. Of course, you're going to want to share that. I love it. All right, question number two. Uh, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your younger self? To start learning how to stop and to slow down and to appreciate life's moments as they're happening. Instead of always thinking forward into what's next, what's next, what am I going to do, You know, who's going to do what, just slow down and enjoy life as life is happening or deal with life as life is happening. Mm -hmm. All right. Question number three, Chris is also a podcaster. What can people expect to hear when tuning into your podcast on finding peace? Uh, Yes. on finding peace. I uh, have guests on there who they themselves have, gone through some pain and suffering in their lives or lots of stress and anxiety, and they share with us what they've learned. So it's a bit about where I've been and where I am now and what where they've been. And my guests consist of, of authors and counselors and actors and actresses and models, just people who want to get a message out there that says, you know what? we can change the way that we view ourselves and we can find inner peace. So good. So if you like what you're hearing today, make sure you check out On Finding Peace with Chris Shea. All right, question number four, Chris, do you have a favorite quote you can share with us? Oh, there are so many quotes out there. <laughs> <laughs> I just love quotes. Um, I would say if I could do two really quick ones, The one quote, I I don't know who to attribute it to, so if anybody does know, let me know, but it's not mine, so I'm not taking credit for it. I love Mm -hmm. this quote. There are no problems, only solutions. I think it's a a great reminder that if we want to stay focused on thinking of solutions and thinking of what we can do to make ourselves uh, you know, more peaceful and change the world around us, then we're not going to be focused on the problems. It's just, you know, what are the solutions out there? And then the other one is really what I've been hanging around on most of this podcast is uh, the quote that says, we do not see things as they are. We see things as we are. So again, it's that inner sense of um, you know, the way that I feel and the way that I see myself is going to be reflected in how I see the world around me. Mm, that's very interesting. So if you have that inner peace inside, you're going to find that peace outside, too. Exactly. And in my mind, it works both ways. You know, when, when people say, you know, I want to find peace in the world, where is peace in the world? I usually respond with, and how much do you have peace within yourself? Very good. So cool. And we're going to put both of those quotes up on the show notes page at RadioMD.com. Last question, Chris. Question number five. Finish this sentence. Throughout my life, the most important thing I've learned is? Slow down. And that's tough to do sometimes. It sounds simple, <laughs> but no, 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 way tough. <laughs> At least for me. I mean, maybe it's simple for somebody else, but not for me. Right. Slow down and just uh, get in touch with what's happening uh, around you at the moment, as you say. Well, exactly. And that's the whole point of the mindfulness is, is we're not here to judge what's happening around me. You notice what's happening around you and then respond accordingly. Mm-hmm. So true. Well, Chris, thank you so much for being on with me today. How can we connect with you? Oh, it's been my pleasure to talk about this, Um, my favorite topic to talk about. (laughs) But uh, probably the best way to get in touch with me is over at my website, and that's lifesjourneyblog.com. And over at the website is all the links to all my social media, to the podcast, 
the books, emails, all that kind of stuff, uh, you can find over at that website. And we will put links to all of that on the show notes page at RadioMD.com. Well, Chris, thank you for being on with me today. I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes. I think you're going to like this one. This fits in with everything you've been talking about today. Right. And the quote is, remember to enjoy the little things in life because one day you will look back and realize they were the big things. Awesome. How about Love that? that. <laughs> Love Chris, that quote. I know. So good. So me too. Chris, thank you again for being on with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was a great time. Love talking with Chris. A lot of fun and just great advice to help you find that inner peace that you're searching for. And thank you for listening. Remember to catch every episode of Which Way is Life. Just hit subscribe on iTunes or my show page at RadioMD.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. And again, if I could ask a favor, please rate and review this podcast on iTunes. That way we get a bigger audience and we can help more people. Which Way is Life is produced by RadioMD.com, award-winning health podcasts. I'd also like to thank my producer, Pamela Moore. I'm Bill Klaproth, and you can find me at Which Way is Life on Twitter and Facebook. You can also check out the show notes at RadioMD.com for all of my episodes. Thanks for listening, and stay well. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode. And I hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life. If you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening. And have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.